we're excited to announce macros in Signal RGB. In this video, we'll dive into our new macro system that is both simple to use and powerful. By default, we've made the most essential functions you'll need, such as remapping specific keys, activating certain effects and layouts, opening applications, and the list goes on. If you crave even more power, our system lets you create any kind of macro you can imagine using JavaScript, which can then be shared with other people. Before we begin, I'd like to point out the toggle in the bottom right corner that lets you enable and disable macros at any time. You can also press Control shift pause on your keyboard. This is an emergency option in the event that you've had too much fun with our macro system and you need to stop it immediately. To get started, click Create New Macro. This will immediately populate the screen with loads of options that we'll go through in this video. On the left side of the screen are the inputs. These are the events that trigger the outputs which are on the right side of the screen. You can mix and match these inputs and outputs with essentially endless possibilities. Let's start with a simple key remap. For a key remap, you can use the key pressed input. All you have to do is drag and drop the input here on the left side. Now just click record and press the key you want to remap. For this example, I'll use the F1 key and I'll toggle discard original key press because I want the F1 key to act as the new output only. Now I just have to drag and drop the press key output here on the right side and then record the key I want it to output, which I'll set to A. Now whenever I press F1, it will output the letter A. Every macro can have more than one output. You can actually drag as many outputs as you want onto a single macro. For example, I'll drag the open Discord output underneath the press key output. Now when I press F1, it will output the letter A and then open Discord. If you right-click the name in the top left corner of the box, you can give the macro a new name. You can delete an output by pressing the trash can icon on the one that you want to delete. You can test a macro with the play button. This is especially useful for testing macros that don't have any buttons as the input. To delete the entire macro, press the trash can button next to the play button. Now with the basics out of the way, I'll show some examples of other useful macros that you can set up. This first macro will load a specific effect when you open an application. For this example, I want it to load the custom spiral effect when I start Fall Guys. Drag and drop application started as the input. To find the name of the exe, open the application, then go to Task Manager, right-click the exe, and press Open File Location. Copy the name into the text box and add .exe at the end. This specific executable is case sensitive, which means this toggle needs to be enabled. Otherwise, it will look for the executable in lowercase letters. Then activate effect as the output. Next, I just have to select custom spiral in this drop-down menu. Now when I launch Fall Guys, the custom spiral effect will load. I can take it a step further and make it load Custom Spiral with specific colors. I modified Custom Spiral with Pink and Cyan to match the Fall Guys theme, and saved it as Preset B. If you're not sure what this means, I suggest checking out our effects tutorial which I'll link in the video description. Now I can go back to the macro and drag and drop Apply Effect Preset, and then select Preset B, disable this toggle, and select Custom Spiral as the target effect. Now when I launch Fall Guys, it will load the Custom Spiral effect with the custom colors I set to match the game. This next macro will load the Minecraft game integration when I start Minecraft, and it will also load my game integration layout for me. We'll be using the same input and output as the last example, which is application started and activate effect respectively. The exe for Minecraft is minecraft.exe, so I'll put that in the text box. It's also case sensitive, so I'll enable this toggle. Then I'll set the effect to Minecraft Java Edition, which is the integration. Then I'll drag and drop the Activate Layout output and set it to my Game Integration Layout. Now when I launch Minecraft, it will load the integration and layout for me. You can set up a macro like this for every game so that you don't have to load anything manually ever again. This next macro will load the Ray Visualizer and my Audio Visualizer layout when I press a specific key combination on my keyboard. The input for this macro is Key Pressed. You can use Control, Shift, and Alt to create combinations. For this example, I'll set it to Control, Shift, R, and I'll discard the original key presses. The outputs for the macro are the same as the last one. I'll set the effect to Ray Visualizer and the layout to my Audio Visualizer layout. Now whenever I press that key combination, it will automatically load the Ray Visualizer and its respective layout. You can set up a macro like this for all of your favorite effects and layouts that you'd like to be able to load quickly. 
This next macro will load an effect and preset when the title of the foreground window contains a specific word. The input will be foreground app match. And I'll put discord as the string. Then in the outputs, I'll activate the solid color effect with preset B, which is the one that I set up with the color of the discord logo. Now anytime I bring Discord to the foreground, it will immediately change the color of my entire PC to the Discord color. This even works for tabs in your browser. So for example, I can set up two of these, one where the string is Reddit and make it activate the Brimstone effect, and one where the string is YouTube and make it activate the Crimson effect. Now as I switch between these two tabs, it will load the effect that's tied to each tab. This next macro will open a URL when I type a specific phrase. The input is word typed, and the output is open URL. I'll set the target word to Crabrave, and then I'll paste the URL to the Crabrave video here. Now anytime I type Crabrave, it will instantly send me to the video. You could also replace a phrase with another phrase. I'll type see that mistake in the target word box and toggle delete type word. Then I'll replace this open URL output with a paste text output and make it say it's a bird now. See that mistake? It's a bird now. By now it should be clear just how flexible the Signal RGB macro system is. I've only covered a few examples because the possibilities are endless. And this is just the beginning. We'll be adding much more functionality to this system in the coming months. We'll also be expanding the system to work for G keys that are on specific keyboard models, as well as mice that have extra buttons. We're always listening to our community, so let us know if you have any suggestions in the comments below. Thanks for watching, and be sure to like and subscribe.